All right, so let's get started. Uh, good evening. If we haven't met yet, my name is Kevin Ross, and I am the founding chairman of Washington First Robotics. And with me here is uh, Aaron McCallum. Say hello. Hi, everyone. So uh, we're going to be talking about the first tech challenge season for the 2015-16 season. Um, here's the, the basic agenda for tonight. We are recording this. If uh, you know somebody that needs to watch this later, uh, we'll be posting it up on YouTube, and we will also get the slides up online. Uh, you'll be able to find them on the on the First Wall website. Um, so the basic agenda: we're going to talk about kickoffs and the, and the the events that are basically happening in the in the next two months. Um, we're going to spend a fair amount of time talking about the program costs. We know that that is a uh, a hot topic. Um, we're going to talk to you about the grants that are going to help with that, and then we need to talk about uh, what we need you to do for registration. And then uh, the last section we will be doing, talking about the league structure for the year. Um, as always, uh, we're doing a webinar, so I, I, everybody's microphone is actually muted by default. There is a questions box, and you're welcome to use that questions box if you would like to ask us something. Um, we monitor that. And uh, there you go. And again, we'll be posting this, uh, this presentation up on the web uh, a little bit later tonight. So... Um, uh, you're not supposed to see that slide. There we go. So <laughs> let's talk about uh, the next thing that happens for us is uh, is kickoff. So the, the FTC kickoff is going to happen this Saturday at 9 a.m. and it'll be at the Microsoft Executive Briefing Center. Uh, I made a mistake. I apologize to everybody. It's actually in Building 33. Uh, we had published Building 34. They are right next door to each other, uh, but we're actually going to be in Building 33, uh, and we'll be sending a, a reminder note to everybody about that um, a little bit later tonight. Uh, doors will open at about 8.30. The actual kickoff event itself will kick off at 9, um, and we're immediately following, we'll have uh, two sets of workshops. Um, we're going to run the same subjects twice so that uh, people can see at least two of them. And those will be at 11 and or at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. And we should be out of there right about noon. So uh, you are welcome to bring your team if you uh, if you get an opportunity and would like to uh, uh, let us know that you're coming. Um, you can find a uh, a link to a Survey Monkey um, uh, on our website if you look in the calendar. Um, so uh, kick out. The, uh, I don't believe it would be a, a game hint for me to tell you the game this year is very interesting. It is a great challenge. You'll, your teams will really enjoy this one. Um, so that I, I'm, I'm really kind of excited about seeing what happens with this year's game. Okay, so uh, the, the next event after kickoff, which is this Saturday, the next one is going to be on the 19th. That's another Saturday. Um, uh, the first tech challenge has a new control system. It is based on Android phones this year. Um, if your team already has, um, uh, if your team already has uh, the the control system for this year, you're welcome to come on down and, and we'll teach you how to use it. Um, if you want to just come down and, and and watch and get teamed up with somebody um, who who has one and see how this whole thing gets put together, uh, come on down on the 19th. We, uh, so it'll it'll start. I'm sorry, I forgot to put the time on the calendar. Um, this is going to run from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, if you look at on the uh, Washington First Robotics website by going to uh, firstwa.org um, and you look on our calendar, um, the Android System Workshop. Here here are the details for it. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll let you take a look at that. Uh, most most of the things I'm telling you about are actually the details are on our calendar. Okay. Um, will the kick? Uh, Bruce has asked if the kickoff will be streamed. Uh, no. It, uh, uh, that's an interesting question. We are going to videotape the workshop sessions, uh, Bruce. We hadn't planned on streaming. Um, let me. Um, I, I don't think we have the facility for doing that, but now that I've said that, we might be able to pull that off. Um, let me talk with Eric about it tonight um, and see if, if we can pull it off. We will. Um, the programming workshop on 
Um, oh, so that answers Bruce's question. Uh, uh, Ram, we will be going over the schedule uh, uh, in a little bit. Um, and then Allison is asking if the programming workshop is all day or is it a drop by? The uh, um, the uh, uh, programming workshop is from nine to three. Um, and I, it's- Kevin, do you want me to answer that? Yeah, go ahead. That's Adrian, by the um, way. The, program, the programming workshop is scheduled um, to go all day. Um, the way that they have it designed, they're gonna be talking about some things and then have you do some hands-on work. So I think if you, if you um, come late, you're going to miss out on some of the beginning stuff. I think you should really try and be there all day. And also, it's designed for your programmers and maybe one to two mentors. So um, please don't bring your whole team. Bring the students that are really going to be doing the programming. And we hope that they can help teach the rest of the students on your team what they need to know. Yep. Thank you for that, Adrian. And then um, uh, Jenny is asking, do the students on the team attend both workshops at the kickoff? So um, if you, if let me show you what the schedule for the, uh, for that looks like. It's up here. If you look on kickoff, um, uh, Adrian, is this showing up on your screen? I think it is. So um, the, there are. Sorry, yes, yes, it is. Okay, so there are there are two workshops. They are at uh, 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. The exact same topics are talked about twice. So um, that you're. And those are open. These are big rooms at Microsoft. So your kids can pick which one they want to go to. So they could go to, you know, the control system and then go to managing your team or, or what, however they want to structure it. We'll run both of these talks twice. Um, it, it might be good, especially if you're a newer team, to sort of take a look at this schedule. It's up on our calendar and, uh, and sort of make a plan for how your teams want to divvy up uh, students to maybe cover everything that's being talked about. Okay. Um, uh, Carol is asking, should we bring computers? Uh, I'm going to assume you mean to the programming workshop, yes. And if you look on that calendar page on our website again, uh, uh, on, on the programming workshop, it'll tell you uh, what to bring. So uh, have a look at that. Um, if you can preload the software, you'll be that much farther ahead. If not, you, you'll be able to download it here. Okay. So um, should be a good session. I'm going to come and learn myself. I have my own control system, and um, so, um, and I'm also bringing my team. So, uh, in addition to that, if if you're um, if you're newer or veterans, uh, we're all, there's another FTC workshop being held by the Seattle Academy. Um, there, um, SAS is doing a great uh, great service to the first community. They have uh, several sessions that they're going to run. Uh, on Saturday the 27th, um, and theirs runs from 8.30 to 4. You, you can check out, again, on our calendar page uh, for the details. Um, these have been really well done over the, over the past couple of years, and uh, it could be really worthwhile, especially if you have uh, students who are all new to FIRST or would just like to get sort of a kickstart as to how to run things. Details on our calendar, I'll, I, I won't belabor that too much more. All right? Um, Yay, so how am I doing so far? All right. Um, the, the last of the workshops that we have currently planned um, is we're going to have an FTC build day, and that'll be on Saturday the 24th. Um, it is a drop-in session. It'll be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It'll be at the Washington First Robotics Field House, which is located in Kent, and uh, you're welcome to come down, bring whatever you're you're having troubles with, or if you just want to bring your team down and practice on an official field, uh, we'll have an official field set up for you. Um, and we'll, there will be experts on hand to be able to talk to you about uh, a wide range of different topics. People know how to do programming and mechanical stuff. So if you feel like that your 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 team needs a little help getting started or, or, or getting over some hurdle, uh, by all means, uh, that, that should be pretty good. Uh, Eric Stokely will be out there running it, and uh, we will drag in uh, all of our, our uh, FTAs and experts to be on hand to help you out. Uh, good resource, and that will be on Saturday the 24th. So um, those, are, those are the things. So th these are sort of the workshops that we've got planned. Um, again, you'll find references to all of these things on our calendar. Um, just to 
uh, we're trying a new look on our calendar just to, our calendar gets loaded with a bunch of stuff and it's always not obvious what's going on. Uh, we have color coded our calendar. So the gold things that are on here are all uh, for FTC. Uh, gold is the FTC color, red is for FLL, blue is for FRC. So uh, if you're ever looking at our calendar and you see gold things, those are for the First Tech Challenge. All right? Yay. Hey, we're, we're, we got through a lot. Now, we're, now comes the fun part. Um, we're going to talk to you about, uh, about the, the budgets and the money. Um, so I know that we've had a lot of interest in this. Um, so we wanted to let you know what the pro program costs are this year. So the registration fee for the year is, is $882. Now, don't panic. We have a plan to help you out with that. Uh, but we, we want to we be sure that everybody understands what it is that we're doing. Um, so uh, we've been doing this for the last couple of years in the FRC program, and it's been working out fine. And it's now time to do the same thing with the FTC program. Um, we in the background, we have been raising money on behalf of your teams for years. Uh, ever since we started the program, uh, we, we've raised money um, from uh, private donors and from the state. Um, and so, um, but we've never actually told you guys how much money we actually raise. Well, now we are. We're, we're telling you that every team in FTC this year, given that we have somewhere around 160 teams, is going to cost us $882. That's what it costs for the volunteers and the staff to do this. Um, so what this does is it helps clear this up for our funders so that our funders know how much money it is that, that we are spending and how much we need to raise to help you guys participate. Um, and so it allows us to give them a single number rather than trying to explain to them um, uh, all of the event expenses that we have, plus all of the the registration fees and those sorts of things. So um, the uh, um, that is the that's why we're changing. Now, last year, if you'll remember, um, it was $275 per team, and and then if you made it to the state championships, it was another $275. So this year, what we're going to do is we're giving you a price that includes uh, the state championship is included in that pricing. So we're only going to hit you for one registration fee. Um, and um, the other things that have changed are, uh, you, you may or may not know this, but I am uh, about to retire. I have about a year left. So we've been putting in place a, a group of volunteers, um, a, a group of staff uh, to replace the volunteers who are starting to age out. And that is part of the long-term success of FIRST in our state is to be able to ensure that um, that we don't have to find another volunteer who can put in a couple thousand hours a year uh, managing the program. So that is where the staff expenses uh, are coming from. And the other big one is that um, we're no longer going to uh, use my and Eric Stokely's credit cards to pay for stuff. Um, we, he and I were happy to do it for a number of years, but the reality is program's getting too big for us to foot the bill. So there you go. Um, and everybody has jumped on exactly the right question. Uh, Jenny and Sarah, the next slide is going to cover you exactly. Um, so uh, the next slide is um, uh, we have been raising funds on your behalf already. Um, we have worked with the state legislature to up the size of the OSPI grants for all of the public schools. Um, and we're also working with private donors to match those. So uh, we have actually been uh, already working on your behalf. We have uh, $500 in grants uh, available for, to every team who applies to us. So that takes that 882 and drops it down to 382. And so, um, uh, um, and we're, we're working on, uh, we're working on getting our existing sponsors to uh, cover this, and we're also developing new sponsors for you. Now, what am I – so our reason for telling you this is we need every public school uh, that's going to do First Tech Challenge to do the OSPI grant. Um, our ability – so the funding that we're getting through the state is paid through that OSPI grant, and so we really need you to apply for it. Um, it, it is due a week from today. 
um, the, the reality is that, so it's actually due on the 17th, but it is an OSPI I grant. So you really need to submit it a couple of days in advance because it has to get, uh, it has to get um, approved by whoever's in charge of your building, okay? Um, so uh, everybody needs to do that if you are a public school. How am I doing? I, oh, we have a ton of questions. Let, let me see if I can summarize them. Um, okay, so you should, uh, uh, so everybody is asking, uh, everybody asked very good and different questions. Um, uh, Jenny has asked, uh, we're waiting to see if we get the OSPI grant and have a temporary team number. The parents are trying to accept the conditions and register their children, but FIRST is not accepting our temporary team number. Uh, is there a way to get the students registered without having to wait until we hear about the grant? Thank you. Um, Jenny, I, I assume you might be a rookie team then. Um, if that's the case, uh, uh, we understand the timing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is Aaron, and I'm thinking, Jenny, um, why don't you and I work offline, and I can work with first and see if we can um, work around, because timing is, um, it is what it is, and I'm sure U.S. First will, will grant us some flexibility just in terms of the timing of the I grant. So, Jenny, you are going to... Um, uh, you are going to send an email to our dear friend Erin McCallum, and here comes her email address. It's going to be in the chat window, if you can find the chat window. That is her email address. Why don't you email her, and she'll see if she can work with you yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, Sarah has asked, how does this affect our OSPI grant applications? What amount should we enter in the budgets for our I grant application? Go ahead and put in that the state registration fee is $882, and uh, they are fully aware of this, yeah. and uh, it, it, is, it is the correct number. And we will, uh, um, that's what you should put in. And we'll, we will deal with the rest of it um, a little bit later. How this is going to work is that um, the part of you, if you apply for an OSPI grant, um, part of the $500 that is, the, the part of the $500 grant that we are going to give you is actually going to be that OSPI money. So, um, and um, so, 200, so your, your bill will be actually $250 higher than the next team over, but we have already raised the money for you through OSPI to cover that. Did that make sense? So we've got you covered. It's just coming from the state. And uh, again, the, the, this is how we worked it out with the legislature. Just um, one clarity on the budget. Um, please summarize at a high level for your I grant your total budget, right? Some some teams may have a um, budget of $2,000 for their FTC team. Others may have a team budget of $4,500. So share that budget because it helps the grants committee at, I, at OSPI review that and make recommendations on funding. So uh, be very transparent. And um, believe me, transparency in fundraising, both public and private, works to your advantage. And don't be bashful about putting the, the real yeah. numbers in there. And um, since you, you took the time to do this, I will let you know that you, you should have at least three budget items in your grant. So uh, registration fees, uh, you know, uh, parts and travel or parts and stipends or whatever it is you want to put in there. Uh, you, you don't need to just put in one line item and right. stop. In fact, you should put in three, okay? So um, now, the $275, so Ram is asking, uh, have I, we've already paid the U.S. first team registration fee of $275. Is that included in the $882? No, it is not. Um, that The national registration fee is independent of this. Uh, are teams who, that are not associated with the school able to receive the grants as well? Yes. And so, um, and I'm, I'm going to show you some more grant info here in just a sec, but yes, you will be eligible for that. Just, just a point of clarification, grants from Washington First Robotics. If you are not a public school, you are not eligible 
to apply for the OSPI funding I grants. I'm sorry about that, but that is a state legislative decision. Yeah. Um, and exactly how much we're going to, uh, how much we will credit you from the OSPI grant um, is, is it be, I'm, I'm, we will do our best for you and we'll let you know what, the, what your final bill is. So uh, uh, our goal is for your out of pocket to be $382. But if you got an OSPI grant, your actual bill could be, a, could be more than that, but it will get offset. And so we, we're working that behind the scenes. We, we will get the math right. Okay, uh, we are not a public school, Heidi, I, we understand that. You should still apply for the Washington First Robotics Grant. And I'm, uh, the next slide will tell you how to do that. Um, uh, Roy, I'm gonna get to that next. Um, uh, Bruce, you have already submitted an OSPI grant request. You're fine, you're, you're, you're taken care of. Uh, uh, yay. Yay, good job. Um, um, Aaron or Kevin, can we clarify though, if people are su submitting OSPI grants, they should still follow the grant process for the WFR grants as well. Yeah. Yes, you should. Yeah. Not, so yes. don't don't think just because you've applied for OSPI that you're not eligible for those other grants. Right. Yep. Right. And one other just point of clarification for those of you who think you have applied to the OSPI I grant because you have empowered your um, CTE director or school administrator, please, please, please follow up with them. Make sure you see a copy of it. Make sure you see the actual receipt of when it's been submitted because we work really hard in, in securing these funds and OSPI and um, it is is happy to support FIRST, but it's our job to make sure that all of those funds that are allocated are actually spent. And if we do not get them spent, it blows our credibility out the water when there are still funds available and we are asking the state legislators to, um, to allocate additional funding. So please double check as of today, only 37 teams had applied for the I grant. We don't know who those 37 teams are, but we've got to believe that there's more capacity out there in our community um, who need to apply. So as Kevin mentioned, the deadline is next Thursday, September 17th, but please make the deadline on Tuesday the 15th because there is a process that your school administration needs to go through. And if you have any questions or unclear about this, just email, you, email me and I am happy to work with you or your school administrator to get access to that I grant application. Okay, um, so Allison's asking, do we prepay the 882 and get reimbursed? No, let, let, me, show you, let me show it to you in just a sec. Um, so, so uh, basically, um, with the $500 grant from us, your cost for the season will be $382 per team, and that includes uh, league play, interleague play, state championships, and th there's no we, we pick up all the costs for the kickoffs and the, the workshops and all the rest of that stuff. So it's just one all-inclusive thing, so you won't have to re uh, come back and get more money. Uh, we're not going to come back to you for more money, yeah. all right? Yeah. So that, that is a little bit of a change. So... Um, now, OSPI grants are due on the 17th. Um, we highly recommend being done by the 15th and then uh, be sure to follow up. It turns out there, uh, if you have a Boeing mentor on your team, your Boeing mentor can apply, apply for a $275 grant to cover the national registration fee. Um, uh, the, there's information about this on our website. Um, I'm going to bring it up here real quick just to show you where it is. Um, if you go up here to Programs, First Tech Challenge, and Grants, um, uh, you can check to see if any if you qualify for any of the U.S. First Team grants. Um, there's uh, details about the OSPI grants, and there's also details about the Boeing grants. Um, there, we also have, uh, if you are in Pierce or Thurston County, we have some donor-directed funds 
uh, that we may be able to help you with as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the Intel grants, you're going to be applying on our grant system, and we'll talk about that here in just a sec. So, uh, here's th this page, uh, First Tech Challenge FTC Grants is, is a good spot for you to look up some of this. Um, uh, Allison, that is, uh, Allison has asked, uh, if a rookie team got the $500 U.S. first grant and the 275 that a Boeing mentor can get is already covered, question mark. Excellent question. I would apply for the Boeing grant anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, because we don't know the answer to that. They, they, those are independent grants. Okay. Now we are going to have a grant application available on our website. It, uh, we're not going to open it. We're, we're still getting it set up, so it isn't ready yet. But uh, on Monday the 21st, um, we are going to open that, and we're expecting to see every one of our teams uh, fill in that grant application. The deadline for that is going to be the 9th of October. Um, and so um, if you don't apply, you won't be eligible for the $500 grant, and we'll expect you to pay the full 882 so in your best interest to please uh, uh, to please uh, take care of this, okay? So uh, and it's not a it, we're not it's not a terribly long application. We're not trying to become paperwork mongers, but we need uh, to to uh, adhere to the wishes of our donors yeah. and for our bookkeeping needs. We need to uh, do a better job than we have in the past of tracking uh, where the grant requests are coming in and and how they're getting doled out. So we need your help on that. Um, and yeah, there, I think there, we're uh, on the grant application. Just a caveat: there are some demographic questions in which um, I think you know some mentors go, "Why do we need to answer this?" Why we need to answer this is by giving us that demographic information. It's going to help us raise more money for you. Um, a lot of funders, public private individuals, foundations, companies are asking for that information. So um, the good news is this year is our inaugural year. The following years, this um, grant system becomes um, archived. So you're not going to have to um, reinvent the wheel year after year, okay? Yeah, and so, um, and, and we know that some of you have uh, objections to, to giving demographic information and uh, but the reality is, is if you don't give it we're not going to be able to give you any money yeah. and it's just it's the, uh, the it is the way of the world in when you're trying to raise money um, and you can have all if you would like to have the philosophical debate that's lovely but it's going to cost you 500 bucks <laughs> <laughs> so I, I that's all we got for you on that one all right. So, uh, and again, our grant application is going to be relatively straightforward, and it, it won't be too onerous for you to to handle. And we will uh, we will email you and remind you about this. Okay. So, um, oh, there's only two slides left. Um, so the registrations. Here's what we'd like you to do. Um, we we'd like you to register with US First as soon as you can. So uh, let me let me back up uh, two slides. Um, the OSPI grants are due on the 17th. The uh, grants, I believe, are evaluated, uh, I think, on the following Wednesday. Yeah. So you should be finding out by the uh, 25th uh, if you got a grant or not. Uh, it, I would be surprised if not. All, if, if, all teams should end up with a grant unless you really mess something up. So uh, you should feel comfy about that. Uh, exactly how much you're going to get, I'm not sure, but I know that you're going to get at least 275. That, that I can't, yeah. uh, unless you really mess up your grant app really badly um, or did something to get disqualified, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be able to cover the national registration fee. So, um, one, the, so the, my reason for pointing that out is um, if you would like to get started um, by, by registering with FIRST, um, you can do that. Okay. We do need you to register with U.S. First before December 9th, so that because October 9th. October 9th. Um, a, a little. <laughs> it, it helps us out immensely. We actually have no idea how many teams there will actually be. We're pretty good at guessing, but sometimes we get surprises, and we really do need you to get registered so that uh, so we can track track you, 
contact you and keep track of things uh, based on team numbers. Um, um, you will be registering with us uh, later than we have in the past. Um, it, our registration system is going to open on the 19th, and it'll be open until the 28th. And that's uh, 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 so we'll need you to register with us then. We are not going to take your payment at that point because uh, what we're actually going to do is once you've registered with us, um, we are going to send you an invoice. Um, the invoices will be sent on the 30th, and the uh, payment will be due by 11, 18, 15, which is about two or three days before the competition. Okay. Um, uh, hopefully that made sense. So it's, it's going to work slightly differently than it has in the past. Uh, part of the staff positions that we brought on is we have uh, a full-time uh, person that handles the money now rather than you having to watch Kevin fumble with it. So, uh, um, and so our bookkeeper is on staff to take care of this, these things, and we can now actually handle purchase orders and all of those things, all right? Um, so, uh, and then, um, yeah, there you go. Th that sort of ends my section on registrations and payments. I'm hoping that made sense to everybody. We're, we're, uh, uh, oh, uh, Roy, you're a rookie team. Welcome to FIRST. We appreciate your joining us. Um, your uh, team has not been recognized on the first FIRSTWAS site because uh, Kevin hasn't gotten around to it yet. Um, it, 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 you'd think it was automated, but it really isn't. Um, you are, we have, I have seen your team on, on the national website and we will, uh, we will take care of, uh, uh, we will take care of ensuring that we update that map soon. Uh, you have not, you shouldn't have missed any of the communications. Um, if, uh, uh, if you've registered with us first, that is actually our primary mailing list that we use. Um, if you're wondering if you have, uh, if you go to programs, and you go to First Tech Challenge, and you can go down to FTC Communications on the menu here. And when I do this, um, these are all of the communications that we've sent in the form of email blasts uh, this year. And so every time we send one, we, we post it up here. Um, so we've actually only sent five. You're, you're welcome to, to browse through these things. All right? And, um, and Every, every time we send an email communication, we download the latest list from, um, from the U.S. First site. So, Kevin, will you put my email in the chat? If they're not receiving emails and they feel they should be, if they would send me an email and I can investigate and try and figure out what's going on. I would love to do that. That is the lovely and talented Adrian Reine, who is uh, uh, our program and logistics coordinator and F, F, she's basically in charge of FTC. Um, Eric and I are not are nowhere near organized enough to actually do this on our own. So she she's in charge. <laughs> so she will she will take care of uh, Adrian will take care of you if you think that you're not getting the communications. Um, okay. Um, uh, thank you, Rom. Rom thanked us for navigating the state legislature. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it's a lot of work, but we, uh, we think it's, it's for a good cause. And so uh, it's actually mostly thanks to, to Erin. Uh, she was the one who did all the hard work there. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to let you know is, um, you know, it's a badge of honor in FIRST to help a new team get started. Um, w w one of the reasons that the bill is $882 is, um, we, we are in this weird transition point of needing to have uh, some staff to handle all of the logistics, and it up, upped our overhead a little bit. As we grow more teams, that number is going to go down because it's really sort of a fixed cost um, that, that we need to, to, to do. So not only is it a feather in your cap to start a new team, but it will also be padding in your wallet next year because the, uh, as the number of teams grows, our registration fees are going to go down. Um, so yay. Um, if you would like to help us get some new teams started, um, uh, the, the best way to do this is word of mouth. Uh, contact a school that, you, that 
um, schools in your area or, or other teams, the people who would like to start teams, and get them involved. This is a great program. Okay. And you might even you might even use this window between now and next Thursday with this OSPI grant. Use it as a hey, you know, join and start a team right now. And as a rookie, um, there are grants where literally this this program is not going to cost you much of anything your first year. Um, so if you um, if you have the time and, quite frankly, turn your turn your kids on to this and ask them to go recruit their friends who are in different schools, and it's all about kind of that that grassroots marketing effort. It's amazing on um, how quickly um, FTC can grow, and as Kevin said, the costs um, for participation just get lowered with the more teams that we have. So, um, yeah, and, you know, and it's a, it's a good way to get things uh, cooking in your community is to, is to make sure that there are other teams around you that, you know, first is first and foremost a, a cultural change uh, vehicle and, and, you know, best way to change a culture is to have a lot of people in it. And so we would love to get your help doing that. All right. And so if you have any, uh, if you have any, uh, uh, if you need assistance starting a new team, uh, you can contact us, ftc at firstwa.org. Um, is a new e email address I created about two and a half hours ago, and now that I'm looking at this, I'm assuming that they got it set up. If not, it'll be working tomorrow. Okay. All right, last slide. What do we got? Let's talk about the leagues for the year. So um, uh, Washington does something called the league format. And so what that means is that uh, you are going to attend a, uh, three events for sure. Um, the first one is going to be on the 21st of November, and it's a Saturday. Um, and the second one is going to be on the 12th of December. You're going to each one of these. Uh, we're going to play six rounds. Uh, last year we tried to do eight. We got a uh, very positive. Uh, confirmation that that was too many <laughs> so we're going to play just six rounds at our leagues now um, so the, you'll play a total of 18 rounds to get seated in the interleague championships for those of you who know what i just said uh we're so we dropped from 24 to 18 it should be it, it'll be just great um so uh the league events are um the league events are um usually between 12 and 16 teams they are um, uh, they're hosted by our our uh, uh, our league leaders and 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 their schools. It's usually at a school somewhere that they usually last about four to five hours, and uh, it's a nice low key event. You can go get help there, um, and then you get to go home and you get to work on your robot again, and then you bring it back for the the next league event. Um, now we we've, we've given you the two dates that we believe almost all of the events are going to happen on. There are going to be some minor variances. We usually have uh, somebody who would like to do a league on a Sunday uh, for uh, various reasons. And so there, I'm pretty sure we may have a Sunday league. It, we're, we're, a little, we, we're always squishy on this at the moment because we don't know where the leagues are going to be and we don't know how many teams are going to be on them. Um, so um, some of them might be on Friday. It, just, it all depends on the league coordinator. Uh, as to what day your uh, uh, event will actually be. You will hear from them. Uh, uh, you will be hearing from the, the, the league coordinators about this. So, um, uh, Kevin, can I interject for just a second? Yeah, go ahead. And, and that's why it's important for you all to register by um, October 9th, because that following week is when I will be putting everybody into leagues, and I have to do it based off of the information at a certain point in time. So if you register by the 9th, we can um, guarantee that you'll be in the league closest to your facility. If you register after, we'll put you in the league closest to you that has room, but you may have to travel a bit further. So you will see by um, the following Friday, I will have the leagues posted on the first, um, the Washington First website, so Friday the 16th, and shortly after that, you should be hearing from your league coordinators. Yep. And uh, uh, did you see Randy's comment? I'm, we'll, we'll, yeah. let, we'll deal with that individually. Did, Adrian, did you see it? 
Oh, I didn't. I switched over to the ca – I closed the comment window, so I'm opening it now. Okay, no worries. All right. Um, registered on first wall or U.S. first? So, uh, Roy, uh, uh, I will uh, – uh, Roy, type your email address into the uh, into the, the question window, and I, I, I will actually get back to you and help you individually on that. So uh, in the interleague championships is going to be on the 16th. It's a Saturday. Um, it actually, it's going to be the weekend of the 16th. Some will be on the 16th. Some will be on the 17th. Uh, they're going to. We believe there are going to be four of them. Uh, two of them will be on the north. Two of them will be in the south. Um, we uh, 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 each of those will have somewhere around between 24 and 36 teams, depending on how many teams we end up with, um, and um, that will be uh, the, the event. It's an all-day event instead of a four- or five-hour event. And uh, the judging happens at that event. And then um, the winners of those events, including the judged awards, will end up moving on to the state championship. State championship this year is on January 30th at Showware Center in Kent. There will be 32 teams at that event. Uh, it's a great event. Uh, it's, it's actually a great deal of fun. So... Uh, best of luck to your teams on making it to there. And again, uh, the, the, the registration fee for the state championship is already included in your registration fee. Uh, we also have something that we've run in the past called the Central League. Um, we, are, uh, we are cognizant of the fact that some of our teams are remote. Um, we currently, it is unknown whether we're doing a Central League or not. If you uh, know what the Central League is and would like to participate in it, you should probably uh, send Adrian a note um, and let her know. Um, what, what this is is that the, the, the Central League will probably play either on the 12th, yeah, it'll probably play on the 12th of December if we do it, and then they will play the night before, oh, they'll play on the 16th. They'll play the 12th, the 16th, and then the 17th. Uh, let me say that one more time. They'll play on December 12th, January 16th. They'll probably play here in Kent, and then, January 17th, they will go to their uh, interleague championship. It's really intended for teams that are in remote areas that don't really aren't really close enough to participate in one of the standard leagues. Okay. Uh, and Kevin, for me to interject, sometimes we do have central on an off weekend. If it's at the college, we have to base it on their schedule. So there is a chance it could be the fifth. Yep. So I just don't want people to lock into in the twelfth. Um, as soon as I have information, I'll send it out, but it could be the fifth as well. Okay. Yay. Um, all right. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, I'm looking, I'm just checking the questions real quick. We're getting lots. Um, of December or January, the Central League would be in, uh, the, would be the either the fifth or the twelfth of December. Um, Carol, I did, hopefully that answered your question. Okay. Uh, advancement to the championship will be the same as, as it was last year. Um, uh, we, will, we're, we will put it up on the website and document it for you. It, I, I can read the whole thing off to you, but your eyes are going to glaze over like mine always do when I talk about that. All right. That isn't so bad. Hey, we got done in 45 minutes. Um, that's all the slides I have. Um, I, I'm open to, to additional questions if you have any. Uh, we are from the Tri-Cities and strongly support the central region. Our school is, requires four to six weeks to approve and arrange for transportation. When will we know about the dates for these competitions? Mm -hmm. We will know on the 16th of – no, wait. Uh, Adrian, what day was it? It was the – that, that's correct. 16th? It's the 16th of, um, 16th of October that I plan to have the league information out. My goal is, is to have the venues locked down by then as well. Um, but at the latest, you should know the venues by the 23rd. Yeah. And Tiffany, I, um, we could really use your help. Yeah. If you know of anybody else that would like to start an FTC team, uh, we would love to do a league in the Tri-Cities. Yeah, and Tiffany, this is Aaron. There's also even some um, private funding in the Tri Cities to get FTC and um, up and running. So, um, yay, we're thrilled you're here. Yes. So, uh, uh, if we can get eight teams in the area, uh, yeah, 
uh, we, we could run a league as small as eight for you. So uh, we, we can't really go any smaller than that. And once you run a league, you'll figure out why. <laughs> and we just really can't go below eight. But um, we, we do have other teams. We have at least one other team in the area. Uh, I'm assuming you're not with the McKinnons. Um, but if, if we can uh, find a couple other uh, schools in the area that would love to do it, we will pay for it. We, I mean, we basically have money to pay for their teams. So um, that would be amazing. All right. Uh, Mon Monsanto has a grant. Oh, really? Okay. Carol, I'm hoping you have a microphone. I'm about to find out. Uh, hi, Carol. Do you have a microphone? I have a microphone. Um, yes, Monsanto has a grant. If there's a Monsanto plant in your area, it's up to $1,500. Oh, that's nice. I did not know about that one. Um, we got told by Monsanto because they support our team. That's fantastic. Really? And, and where are you located? Moses Lake. Yep. Awesome. Yay! Woohoo! That that's awesome. Carol, could you email Aaron and I the information you have so we can make sure to post it for other teams? I will do that. That uh, would be lovely. Well, now that you're a Monsanto expert, do you know if there are any other Monsantos in the area? I know we have one in Warden. And I believe there's one in the Tri Cities. I believe there is too. They uh, they support us with a regional grant, and then they told us about this one, so we know that it's there. And uh, Rom has already beat us to the punch. Thank you, Rom. Let me see if I can actually. Oh crap! Let's see. I want a sec. Rom just posted the uh, link. Let me see if I can copy it. And I'm gonna copy this and we'll bring it up on the screen here real quick. Um, I believe it opened on Tuesday. It opened on Tuesday. So uh, mm -hmm. MonsantoFun.org grants overview, and look at that, first robotics. And especially for girls. Absolutely. That's awesome. Absolutely. So uh, with uh, something to look into, folks, and and we really we really hope that everybody can take advantage of these things. You know, we uh, uh, we do have a small staff, but it's mostly volunteers doing all of this fundraising on your behalf and so uh, we need you to help us out as much as you can. To help There's out. also a grant if you get one of the team members or one of their employees to work with you as a volunteer on your team yeah. you get more money. Yeah. Oh, okay so have a look at that and it actually it looks like it applies to FRC and FTC. And, a, and junior FLL? No uh, it's not eligible. Yeah. Oh unfortunately. Okay. But it's FTC and FRC so that's cool. We will put that's that great. on our that's list. That's awesome. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Carol, for pointing that out. Okay, so, um, all right. Uh, I think we shall be done then so that we don't go over an hour. It's one of those rare times that I didn't yak for more than an hour. <laughs> uh, thank you all for attending. Um, hopefully we'll see most of you at the kickoff this weekend. Um, if you are not coming to the kickoff directly, um, you'll find that all of the kickoff materials will be released. I believe that, I think it might be at noon our time on the First Tech Challenge website. Um, to find that, you're going to go to www.usfirst.org slash FTC. Um, they will put all of the kickoff info, uh, the, the, uh, the challenge and all the rest of that stuff will be up here uh, shortly after um, uh, oh, is it, it's noon Eastern time. That's right. So it'll be 9 o'clock our time. So um, um, there you go. You'll be able to find the same kickoff video that we're going to show, and uh, the game manuals and all the rest of that will appear. Um, it's, a, it's sort of a fun thing to do if you, uh, if you can't make it to see us, if, if you know there are other teams in the area. It's kind of a fun deal to try and get together, or at least get together with your team so everybody can see it. Um, uh, great deal of fun. All right, with that, I think we'll end it. Uh, thank you all for attending, and we'll see you hopefully at kickoff.